There is often confusion when deciding whether to use static pressure or stagnation pressure. This frequently arises when defining a pressure within a control valve junction or an assigned pressure junction. This also arises when reviewing pressures in the output. So what's the difference between static pressure and stagnation pressure? This can best be illustrated by breaking down the Bernoulli equation into its components. The Bernoulli equation states that for incompressible inviscid flow, the sum of static pressure plus dynamic pressure plus hydrostatic pressure remains constant along a streamline. Stagnation pressure is the sum of static pressure plus dynamic pressure. To better illustrate the relationship between static pressure, dynamic pressure, and stagnation pressure, let's review an open tank draining through a pipe due to gravity. The graph on the right shows the stagnation pressure and static pressure plotted against the flow length. Keep in mind that stagnation pressure is always greater than or equal to static pressure. The static pressure at location 1 is equal to the stagnation pressure at location 1 due to the fact that the velocity or dynamic pressure at location 1 is essentially zero. Likewise, the static pressure at location 2 is equal to the stagnation pressure at location 2 due to the fact that the velocity at location 2 is essentially zero. The static pressure and stagnation pressure between locations 1 and 2 only varies due to the change in hydrostatic pressure. At location 3, we will assume a lossless connection to simplify this discussion. At this point, our stagnation pressure is the same as at location 2. However, our dynamic pressure has increased due to the introduction of velocity to the fluid. The increase in velocity means we now have a dynamic component to account for. Notice in the graph at location 3 that the static pressure decreases. The amount by which the static pressure decreases is equivalent to the amount of dynamic pressure introduced. As fluid moves along the pipe from location 3 to location 4, there is a decrease in stagnation pressure due to friction. This pressure loss is irrecoverable, while the decrease in static pressure has both recoverable and irrecoverable components. Notice that as fluid moves through the area expansion at location 4, again we will assume that this is a lossless component. The static pressure increases due to the decrease in fluid velocity. It is worth reiterating that stagnation pressure is always greater than or equal to static pressure. Notice that at locations 3 and 4, where the fluid velocity changes, the stagnation pressure does not change, except for losses due to friction. Now let's take a look at how this comes into play when defining your system. The control valve junction is one of two junctions in the toolbox, which requires you to specify either a static or a stagnation pressure. Most real-world control valves read system pressures using a sensor connected to a tap in the side of a pipe. Unless the pressure sensor has an inline element, such as a pitot tube, the pressure reading will return a static pressure measurement. By default, our control valve pressure set points are set to control on a static pressure. The assigned pressure junction is the second junction that requires you to specify either a static or a stagnation pressure. The assigned pressure junction acts as a system boundary. This junction will not balance mass flow into and out of itself. Instead, this junction will source and sink whatever flow is required in order to maintain the user-defined pressure. Defining this junction using a stagnation pressure is appropriate when trying to model a large body of fluid with negligible velocity. Defining this junction using a static pressure is appropriate, for example, when defining a custody transfer in a pipeline. If you are modeling a system up to the point of a custody exchange, it is likely that you have a flow element and a pressure gauge at that point. You would then either define your system boundary using an assigned flow junction, or assuming there is not an inline pressure sensor, you would use a static pressure system boundary. It is equally important to be aware of which parameters you are reviewing in the output. If you are comparing the results of your model to actual pressure measurements from your system, be sure to compare a static pressure gauge measurement to a static pressure output parameter. Dynamic pressure is a very useful output parameter for understanding the difference between static pressure and stagnation pressure, as dynamic pressure is simply stagnation pressure minus static pressure. Another common source of confusion is how to define a discharge system boundary. As is specified by Crane Technical Paper 410, a k-factor of 1 should be applied to an abrupt transition pipe exit. The confusion arises when defining a discharge pressure in association with a discharge loss coefficient. 
When discharging into a reservoir or a large body of liquid where the velocity is essentially zero, AFT recommends that the user always define a stagnation system boundary. The three systems on the left are all defined exactly the same, except for the discharge system boundary. For this simple comparison, we are modeling water at 59 degrees Fahrenheit flowing from a pressure of 20 PSIA stagnation through 20 feet of 2 inch pipe into the base of a reservoir that's 10 feet deep. J10 is a reservoir junction with a 10 foot liquid surface elevation. In the pipe depth and loss coefficient tab, we have defined the pipe depth to be 10 feet below the surface elevation and a pipe exit loss coefficient of k equals 1 to represent an abrupt pipe exit per crane. J20 is an assigned pressure junction, which is representing the same boundary condition as J10. In order to do this, we must first convert 10 feet of water into a pressure. As we are assuming this system boundary is a large body of water with a negligible velocity, we will define this junction using a stagnation pressure. When defining a system boundary using a stagnation pressure, you must manually account for a loss coefficient. Again, this system boundary will be modeled using an abrupt transition pipe exit loss as defined by Crane. Notice how the results of these two systems are the same, except for a slight difference due to converting 10 feet of water to 4.332 PSIG. J30 is also an assigned pressure junction and will be representing the same system boundary condition as J10 and J20. This junction has been defined using a static pressure. Again, this pressure is equivalent to 10 feet of water, however, when you specify this pressure as static, you do not need to account for the pipe exit loss coefficient. You can see that the results for this system are the same as the previous two systems. When modeling a system boundary using a static pressure, you are intrinsically accounting for the k equals 1 exit loss that represents an abrupt transition pipe exit used with a stagnation pressure. Although this may appear to simplify the modeling process, it can in fact complicate things when using a loss coefficient for something other than an abrupt transition pipe exit. A stagnation pressure boundary condition will simplify your model if you have a loss coefficient other than k equals 1 and if you plan on evaluating multiple system operating conditions. We will elaborate on the relationship between changing system operating conditions and system boundary definitions, along with appropriately representing pressure measurements in a future tutorial.